Yo, what's going on, guys? Quite a few updates on the bike. Um, so this is my 2021 YZ450. Um, I got it set up in Supermoto trim right now. Um, you can see I got the Warp 9s on there. I custom ordered these. Um, I got these probably back in late November of 2020. Um, 17 by three, three and a half in the front and uh, 17 by a four in the rear. I have a low profile lighting kit on it. Uh, these lights right here are something I ordered off of Amazon and I just mounted them in a way to where you can't see them from the outside of the bike so it still has a dirt bike appearance and then these I actually got from uh, Street OHB they make a uh, low profile kit I believe it's a universal kit but um, I got two USB ports right here for a phone charger. That's the headlight switch. Uh, let's see, I got another headlight switch with uh, three different modes. So it goes high beam, low beam, and strobe, and a horn button. And this is actually a new addition right here. Um, I'm actually in the middle of doing a turbo build on this bike right now. And um, a lot of people say it can't be done. Uh, I say otherwise. You just have to thoroughly plan out the system. And uh, so this turbo right here is um, a GT1544. This is actually an actual genuine Garrett turbo. Um, so I'm doing some testing with this right now. I still got to make a... Um, cold side for it so the the thing about the single cylinders is even though this looks like a pretty simple routing uh passage right here to just go from like the compressor housing to the throttle body um the thing about the single cylinders is they actually like a lot of plenum volume and um, i did a little bit of research uh, a few months ago and it seems like the rule of thumb is uh you want your plenum volume or basically uh, intake manifold, I guess you could say, is you want it three to four times the CC of the engine. So in my case, since this is a 450 CC, I would want it around 1800 CCs um, of volume. So uh, I'm actually mounting it in the stock location. Um, already got everything gutted out of here um, so I'm gonna see if I can try to make it fit in the stock location because I don't want anything to look you know too gaudy or anything so um, I did convert over to a uh, return style fuel setup so you can see I got the regulator mounted under here um, I swapped everything out with PTFE lines um, just to be safe because the bike is on E85. Um, the way I am running it on E85, because I get this question a lot also, is um, basically the stock tank has a has a internal fuel pressure regulator in here which regulates the fuel pressure to 43 PSI. Anything above that, it bleeds off to maintain that 43 PSI rating. So the first thing you have to do is you have to take that regulator out and completely block it off because it kind of uh, negates the whole purpose of this right here because you, you could turn this up to 60 PSI, but the fuel line pressure is never gonna see above that because the internal, it'll be fighting the internal regulator. So you have to block that off. So, um, this is where I manually adjust my fuel pressure. 
Uh, you can see it has a boost reference port under there. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio with, there's a one-to-one -one ratio between fuel pressure and boost pressure. So for every pound of boost, it increases the fuel pressure by one PSI. So um, basically what I'm doing with the manual regulator is um, I'm running an increased fuel pressure. Uh, so I'm running four bar fuel pressure. Um, the stock setup uses 43 PSI in which the injector flow is 387 cc. So by running four bar, which is 60 PSI, um, I essentially changed this injector to a 450 cc uh, injector. And that puts me right on par with what would be required to make the same power on E85 as the bike does on gasoline with the stock configuration. So um, all I'm pretty much doing is just uh, manipulating uh, the fuel pressure in order to make the injector flow more to compensate with the extra 30 to 40 percent needed uh, fuel flow that E85 requires. So you can see right here, uh, that is where I am running my return for the turbo. Um, I mean, it's not the best spot. I mean, it is kind of a decline. So, you know, it does gradually drain in there. I haven't noticed any smoking or anything coming out of the turbine housing. So I guess that location isn't too bad. Um, and then as far as the feed goes for the turbo, um, I am using the oil filter cover. I just welded a bong on there. Nice globby welds, but mm, whatever. So, uh, so I get this question a lot. Also, a lot of people think that this turbo hangs off the bike a lot, but it's actually not the case at all. You see, I'm sitting on the bike right now, and. I'm actually sitting a little bit more forward than I normally would be, but you can see like my, it doesn't come in contact with my foot at all. And the reasoning behind routing the turbo like this or uh, mounting it in this diagonal position is just in case I wanted to tie a full length exhaust back into it, I can easily do that. I know it looks extremely tight from this uh, angle right here, but it actually does. It's about an eighth of an inch clearance between that and the, between the actual turbine housing exhaust flange and the uh, coolant pipe right there. So it angles directly, it angles perfectly in this direction right here. So I could tie an exhaust straight through muffler into the system if I wanted to but honestly i'll probably end up just going with the turn down maybe like route it down here or something or i don't know maybe through here and out of here i don't know it's still kind of up in the air on what i want to do with it but um my goal is to make 100 horsepower with the bike um if i blow it up in the process it is what it is um a lot of people don't do turbo bikes on the street like if you do a lot of uh research um this is pretty big in the um snowmobiling uh little niche i guess you could say a lot of guys have snow bikes and they'll put turbos on them to make up <clears throat> for racing at higher altitude because the air is less dense so the turbo kind of uh makes up for it but you'll never see them have actual wheels on the bike and ride them on the street. They'll mainly just be riding in the snow with them. So that's what kind of makes my build a little bit different. So, <clears throat> but I'll probably be posting more updates on this. Um, I got another turbo that I will be testing. So it'll either be this one or the GT 15 44, or I have another turbo, um, is sized around like a Garrett GT2252, which I think will probably be a better match for what I'm trying to do. So, uh, 
Yeah, the turban housing is a little bit restrictive on this one, and 